Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. My name is Christian and today is Saturday, the best day of the week. <laughs> Now, today I want to teach you three important lessons about language learning. And we are going to start with this. This is a Chinese finger trap and the way it works is very simple. You put your fingers inside And then when you try to pull them out, well, you can't. There is only one way to escape, and it goes against all of our instincts. But it teaches us something really profound about learning. But before I show you how to escape, I want to talk about objectives. And get ready, because this is going to be a little bit deep. Let's start with a question. What is your language learning objective? For almost all language learners, it's something like, I want to get fluency, or I want to be B2, or I want to speak like a native speaker. Now, I want you to just close your eyes and imagine the moment when you reach that objective. Maybe it happens in the middle of a conversation. Or maybe you go to bed one night and then you wake up the next morning and boom, objective achieved. But is that really how it works? Is there a moment when you become fluent? Is there a day when you move from B1 to B2? Well, maybe I'm just looking at time the wrong way. You know, maybe if I ask you to imagine a moment or a day, that's unfair. But maybe there is a month or a year or a decade when you do become fluent. But that still leaves us with the question, how do you know when you've achieved your objective? And if you don't know when you've achieved your objective, then what's the point of having it? And this is the first lesson. Learning is a process. Something like fluency is not something that happens. It is something that is happening. Objectives in language learning are meaningless. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Christian, we need objectives. How can anyone learn anything without objectives? Objectives give us a target to work towards. Objectives motivate people. Christian, you think that you are a revolutionary, but You are soft. You are just encouraging people to accept that they should be stupid and lazy. A goal is a dream with a deadline. A deadline. A date. A time. I want to read you a quote about time from almost 2,000 years ago. Perhaps it might be said rightly that there are three times. A time present of things past, a time present of things present, and a time present of things future. For these three do coexist somehow in the soul, for otherwise I could not see them. The time present of things past is memory. The time present of things present is direct experience. The time present of things future is expectation. The time present. We are so accustomed to viewing time in three ways, the past and the present and the future, that we forget that we only ever experience time in one way, the present. Time is happening. Your past experiences and your future expectations come together to make you. And now we get to a really big question. Who are you? And more specifically, who are you 
right now. And this is the second lesson. The only English ability that you will ever have in your life is your English ability in the present. If you don't value it and use it in the present, then you will never use it. I want to tell you a little Zen story. One day a woman goes into a butcher's shop and she asks the butcher, please give me your best piece of meat. And the butcher replies, all of my meat is the best. There is not one piece of meat that is better than another. And in that moment, the woman was enlightened. Zen teaches that there is no relative value, only absolute value, and that we cannot judge the worth of something by comparing it to something else. Each thing is a pure expression of itself, and it's the same for people. And this is the final lesson. Your value does not come from comparison. You cannot compare yourself to other students or native speakers, or even to some future you that has perfect English. Your value is absolute. And now we are finally ready to escape from the trap. And the solution is really simple. Instead of pulling, we need to do the opposite of what our instincts tell us. And we need to push. Our objective is to pull. But in order to succeed, we need to do the opposite. The path to success is never clear. Now, some of these ideas might seem like pure fantasy, but they are all based on evidence. Research has shown that abandoning objectives leads to more success, and that pulling too hard leads to failure. There is only one thing that I want for you, and that is for you to understand that your English is perfect now. Because you, in the present, is the only thing that exists. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class.